Uh, today, News Radio Wham 1180 is Wham 1180 Day, I should say. The mayor making that designation as Rochester's Wham Radio turns 100. Wham Radio's Joe LaMonaco has been researching the history for a year long podcast, and he's joining us live with more as he and his colleagues celebrate. Joe, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Matt. It's good to have you on. First of all, congratulations on the centennial. Uh, there is so much history to this station. Take us through kind of the first day, if you can, of Wham 1180 uh, and it, its origins. Well, first of all, they had no idea what they were doing. Radio <laughs> was just being born in 1922, and Rochester had tried it a little bit a few years earlier. But then when George Eastman got involved, and WHAM was created, as you can see there. Our first transmitter site and studios were in the Eastman Theater. They were really inventing a brand new medium and trying to figure out what to do with it. There was basically a blank canvas that they were able to write on, and over a century of broadcast, went from playing a lot of music, doing everything live, front to back all throughout the day uh, to where we have progressed to today still do everything live but at least on our station the music went away uh, back in 1991. Is it fascinating for you to look at where that technology was 100 years ago and how far we've come and what did you find in terms of the evolution uh, of the station throughout the years that maybe stood out to you? Well back in the earliest days of course it took a Herculean efforts to get radio on the air. Took a full team of engineers monitoring that transmitter 100% of the time just to make sure that it stayed on the air. Um, it, they had to create literally a, a building that was large enough for the transmitter to fit in. Uh, that building still exists, though our transmitter is far smaller today. Uh, it took a lot of effort and a lot of people to be able to bring the product on the air every single day. We've been able to, of course, streamline that process with the digital coming in. It makes it a lot easier to get our news and information out to our audience wherever they happen to be. I'm using a phone right now. We use that with our iHeartRadio app to deliver our product as well as still a transmitter. So we're doing, uh, we still live in the past a little bit, uh, but we also have vaulted into the future with the, the digital side of things. It's interesting when we talk about kind of the 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 drastic changes in technology from, from then to now, uh, but how revolutionary it was during its time in terms of connecting people. It was, it was the way that information was disseminated across large spans of geography. I mean, uh, you figure Wham has had a 50,000 watt transmitter for much of its history. That gave it the ability to reach all corners of not only the greater Rochester area and around Monroe County, uh, but uh, all the way into what we say 38 states in Canada. Uh, it could be reached over a wide geographic area. You didn't need to be able to afford anything fancy. You just had to have a receiver. You didn't need to know how to read or anything else. You just had to be able to listen so that someone could tell you a story. And that's really what the medium is. It's about the power of story. It's about the ability to connect community together the sharing of information, the sharing of ideas. And that is really what's been at the core of not only WHAM, but the entire industry throughout its hundred years. I know you've been doing a years long podcast celebrating the centennial. What's, what's been fun for you about researching this, uh, about looking into the history and what have you enjoyed about doing this? Well, I've really enjoyed talking to my colleagues, some who I have had the ability to work with and some who I just missed when I came to WHAM in the early 90s. It's been wonderful to learn their stories, why they got interested in broadcasting in the first place, what was it about, what they heard when they were probably younger people, and what connected them to, I want to go do this. I want to tell stories. I want to get into journalism. I want to be the person behind the microphone holding the conversation. It's so many people have these same stories and it's been wonderful to learn about them and also to preserve it. Most of what happens with radio, it goes to the transmitter. And as Doug Emblidge said, when I talked to him, it goes off to Mars and then tomorrow you start all over again. Yeah. Most of it wasn't preserved. So it's great that we can warehouse all of this 
great information, all of these stories, and the connection that we have all had to this one singular place, and it's been a part of Rochester now for 100 years. Yeah, such a rich history. All right, Joe, one more question for you, and this may be the toughest one of all. We look back at the last 100 years. What do you see now for the future of radio? Because the technology is evolving so fast, and everything's changing in broadcast in general, whether it's TV or radio. Everything is kind of, it's a game changer right now. What do you see as the future? Well, I think, Matt, it really all just comes down to the connection to story. Mm -hmm. And whether you are listening to those stories and those voices through a receiver, and it's a transmitter in a field somewhere sending a signal that gets picked up by a radio receiver, or you're tapping open your app, or you're listening on a computer, it really is about the stories that are being shared, the important conversations that are happening in communities all across the country. So even if we're changing how we consume it, we are still consuming it and we are still part of a greater community because these professionals, these journalists, these talk show hosts, these disc jockeys and entertainers are still there to become a part of our lives, to be right there in your ear telling you stories every day. Yeah, still connecting with people regardless of how we do it through technology. Joe, great to have you on and have this conversation this morning and congratulations on the centennial. Appreciate your time. Matt, thanks so much. Happy Wham Day, 13 Wham TV. Yeah, all right.